You're listening to The Profile. Hello and welcome to The Profile podcast. I'm Andy Peck. For the past 17 years, I've been interviewing leaders in the church and the wider culture. In the coming weeks, you'll be hearing the best of these conversations, plus some brand new ones as well. It was leadership expert John Maxwell who famously said, leadership is influence. Some have massive influence through their role as a leader of a church or business, a charity or a family. Others have influence in their neighbourhood, a network of friends or through leisure interests. It's our prayer that these conversations will help you in whatever spheres you have influence. This show is brought to you by Premier Christianity magazine, the UK's leading Christian magazine. Get full online access and the print magazine every month by becoming a subscriber. See special offers available now at premierchristianity.com. One of the major topics taught by Jesus was the good news of the kingdom of God. But down throughout history, the kingdom of God has been variously interpreted. Some see it as a purely future thing brought when Jesus returns. Others see it as something that God is doing in society as we see God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. And there are many variations of this. Well, I'm joined this week by Lauren Crook, who heads up Kingdom Living Ministries and looks to assist Christians in living a kingdom life where he has placed them. So welcome, Lauren, back to The Leadership Show. Hi, Andy. It's good to be here. So remind us how the ministry came about, first of all, Lauren. So the ministry started um, about four and a half years ago. I used to be the head of school at London School of Supernatural Ministry. Um, and when I left there, um, myself and a group from there left to begin Kingdom Living Ministries. And uh, it was all very kind of unexpected. We weren't sure what we were going to be doing, but God told us that we were going to be starting up a a training and equipping centre for Christians, and it's gone from there. Well, thank you. Well, we could we can explore uh, a little bit of that uh, as we go. Um, but uh, what what are we talking in terms of the size of your group, how often you meet, all that kind of stuff, and and the t- kind of people that come on your course? Yeah. So last year we had around forty students, and that covers both our in person course and our online course, and we have people from. Um, a range of denominations and a range of stages of life, students that are 18, students that are in their 70s, um, and all coming from some from very traditional backgrounds, some from charismatic backgrounds, but all wanting to do life together, wanting to learn together and grow in the love of God together. So it's been a really exciting time for us. And so it's a kind of midweek course, evenings, that kind of thing? It's a part-time course, and depending on which course you're doing, it um, when when you can come is different. Our London course is on a Thursday from half ten till half four in North London in Enfield, and our online course is on a Wednesday night from seven till nine p.m. And we've actually this year also launched um, two other campuses: one in West Sussex and one in Heathrow, and they're going to be on Monday nights um, from seven till nine thirty on a monday night and then one saturday a month as well so so that we can be equipping people to uh, practice the gifts of the spirit going out on the streets praying for people that kind of thing so we're really excited about how god is growing klm and what's coming up this year that's fabulous um so lauren you mentioned that you unexpectedly kind of sensed that god was saying you should set this up um I'm interested in the, the process of that. Um, obviously, people talk about hearing from God. Uh, what what was your process of hearing from God that you should do this? Yeah, I found that God doesn't always do things the way that you know them to be or the way that you've done them before. And he doesn't always make things um, as you've planned them to be. And I think sometimes we make plans for ourselves and he has a little chuckle thinking that sounds really good, uh, but I've got some other plans. And so um, while our vision is the same and our vision is to fuel revival through the equipping of the body of Christ, our vision hasn't changed at all. But we feel that the way that God wants to accomplish it has has changed. 
Um, and actually what he's moving us to is to setting up uh, smaller campuses where we can really invest in people at a local scale, where we don't want to create a bubble where everyone comes to that actually they then don't know how to um, replicate or how to do that kingdom life outside of that bubble in their regular life, you know, picking the kids up from school when they're at work in their family. If they don't know how to take what they're learning out of this environment, it's it's not very helpful. And so we feel God is taking us to a place where we have small campuses locally so we can really train people up where they are, um, that people will see the difference in them each week, each day, as they're stepping more into what God has for them. And so where we started you know, four and a half years ago, we had um, a, a small hall in, in East London. We had five students. And obviously now we're looking at 40 plus students um, in our London and online school. And then we're also adding new campuses. And we feel that this is what God has been saying. And uh, we've learned as a team to expect the unexpected, to discern what God is saying and to say yes to what he's saying yes to and no to what he's saying no to and just trust that God will sort the rest out. Okay, so I'm going to press you. So is it a sense of inner peace when you have an idea and you think that's from God or is it a series of circumstances that you think actually God seems to be speaking through a number of people as prophetic words? How do you how do you discern what you've just told me? It's a number of different ways. Um, so sometimes it is circumstance. So it could be that someone approaches us and says, I want to do a KLM where I am. And we we have that then in a sense of peace that actually, yes, this is something we're supposed to do. And in, in uh, Colossians, it says that we're supposed to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. And that word rule is the word umpire, like a referee. And so to me, the peace of Christ is what makes my decisions. It's what um, rules the decisions that I'm making. And so I will take something to God. And even if it doesn't make sense, I may have peace about it. Or it may be something that logically makes sense, but I don't have peace about it. And that's one of the ways that I discern the voice of God. And I discern what way he wants KLM to go, what way he wants my life to go. So it may be that it may be a set of coincidental circumstances, but also what I believe is that if he's saying it to me, he's going to be saying it to the team. And so as a team, we will also discuss and decide between us whether we feel God is saying yes to something or no, and that the voice of the collective is also the voice of God. And we will use that as well. No, that's really helpful. Lauren. Thank you for, for, for clarifying. Um, Lauren, part of the, vision of this show is to help people who may not have a leadership position or confidence to be an influence to use their influence for god um and i was interested that your website states we believe that every individual is created with purpose and power by a living god sorry by a loving god designed to live and love like jesus in their individual spheres of influence which is you know <laughs> which is music to my ears as, as a host of this show <laughs> so i mean how does your your course help people in this talk talk us into about some of the details of the kind of topics you look at and and how you enable people who perhaps come to you very nervously you've talked about people from a conservative background so perhaps not experienced in in seeing god more overtly working in people's lives H how do you help them move forward Sure. So we're not a highly academic course. We are a training and equipping centre um, and we give hands on practical tools to see the kingdom of God move where you are. So this may be for you. You're at the school gate meeting uh, other parents. You may work in a bank. You may be an electrician or a judge or a church leader or a full time parent. But we want to give you the tools. God wants to give you the tools to hear from him to learn how to hear his voice and to discern between his voice, your thoughts, the the words of this world, to hear his voice for yourself and for others, to get divine strategy for your life, for your family, for your workplace. We want to equip you to be better leaders, better communicators, more confident in Christ, to know yourself better, to know God better than ever before. 
and for us some of the testimonies that have come from our students which really delight my heart because we see how God through knowing our identity in Christ and growing in confidence that we're loved and that God does want to use us oftentimes that is the pinnacle point actually rather than knowing how to do it it's it's truly knowing in your heart that God does want to use you and that you have worth and value and so some of the testimonies that we've had from students this year um, we've seen students healed from chronic pain we've seen um, in the workplace we've seen people getting promotions and raises in their job as a result of growing in their self-confidence and their identity in Christ um, recognizing that they have good ideas to share um, and not holding back um, we have seen people get free from addictions and mental health we've seen people stepping into new ministries or being asked to do more at their churches we've seen people have improvement in their personal relationships in their work life and in their family and having confidence that God wants to use them and that um, God is a good God and he promises us things and when when he says to us pursue love and desire the gifts of the spirit I don't believe he would tell us to desire something he doesn't want to give to us because he's good and so when we recognize that he does want to give us the gifts of the spirit and we learn how to use them through practicing being in a safe environment of fellow believers then we've seen people really grow in those giftings that's fabulous to, to hear Lauren um, I mean just to from from a listener's point of view, as I'm asking these questions, I've I've been part of a course myself over in Eastgate in uh, mm -hmm. uh, near Gravesend, um, and uh, and I I guess one of the things I came away from the course was was the sense of a culture. If that's I realise the yeah. word culture is a bit of a nebulous word, but it's it's a sense of a mindset about God and His goodness and His love, and and the positivity that comes from that. Not a it's not a kind of a self-help positivity but it's a, a sense that you know that god is god is good and god loves us and he, he's looking to do things through us and and that's what you seem to be describing that people walk into that atmosphere absolutely and the the strongest culture will always prevail and so we want to create a culture where people are empowered where people recognize that god wants to use them that they're loved and known by him and that everything is possible we want to believe the bible when we read it that all things are possible and uh, we want to learn more about who the father is the son is the holy spirit is and we want to learn more about what he has planned what his plans and purposes are for each individual as well as for the church as a whole uh, obviously listeners will be um going through various <laughs> times in their lives and and some of whom will have will have prayed for stuff that that hasn't worked out and i'm sure there are people who come on your course who've maybe stepped out some have seen people healed some of some haven't uh you, you must be asked this question a hundred times but i'll give you the opportunity to answer it so what uh, what about when when it doesn't work as, as you might have imagined as you say this is a question that i'm asked a lot and to be completely honest with you, my answer is always the same, which is, I don't know. I don't have all of the answers and I don't understand everything. And there have been people that I pray for that get healed. And there are people that I pray for that haven't been healed. But I do believe that my Bible talks about pray for the sick and they will recover. It says that Jesus commissioned us to, to pray for the sick. And so my obedience lies in praying for the sick and the success or what we deem as success um, is down to God and we don't know we don't understand all of his ways and one of the things that I've learned on the most is something that Bill Johnson says and um, he says if you want the peace that passes understanding you need to give up your right to understand and I've often thought to myself I want that peace that passes all understanding and so there are points that I don't understand everything and I'm just I'm learning to be OK with that. And I'm learning that actually that's an opportunity for me to uh, lean on God and delve deeper into um, his truth and who he is. 
Well, thank you. Thank you for clarifying. Laura. That's that's really helpful. Um, as you reflect on yourself personally, if a more, more personal question for you, uh, you've been leading for, you say, four and a half, five years. Um, uh, what have you learned in the last year uh, about yourself, about leading uh, this kind of new venture? Uh, you need a, a degree of stamina, I'm sure, uh, to keep mm-hmm. going. Uh, what, what, what would be your, your personal lessons? Yeah, I've been learning how important it is to have a team of people who don't think the same way that I do. It encourages me to not get stuck in my way of thinking. It challenges me. It covers my weaknesses. And I believe that God has designed us to work with people of all giftings and strengths so that we can more fully represent and display the character of Christ. I think for myself as well, I really have learned the importance of self-care, of looking after myself, looking after my mental health, looking after my physical health, recognising what I can do and what I can't do, what I should be saying yes to and what I need to say no to. And that especially when you have a team around you, allowing them to cover you and allowing people to all work together so that we are not overburdening ourselves and overworking ourselves, trusting that if God has said something that it it's going to happen as I give myself to him. But I don't believe that he wants to, he wants me to work myself sick or to overdo it. And so trusting him in that because often overworking for me is a sign that I'm not trusting because I'm trying to make it all happen in my own strength rather than letting God do it. So that's something really important that I've been learning this year. Uh, And can I ask you, are you you part-time in doing this? Do you have an ancillary job or how how does it all work in terms of your own time? Myself, I do this job full-time and the rest of the team uh, do it part-time and they have um, other jobs to financially support them doing this but when I started I I felt God say to me that I shouldn't get a part-time job even though that's what made sense Uh, logically to me I felt him say I was going to be way too busy to do that and he was right as he always is and so this has been my my full-time job wonderful and it's good good that the Lord's provided thus far um as you've um as you've uh, continued to trust him super um now I guess a question about this kind of ministry, um, you know, there'll be many Christians in leadership um, listening, you know, most of whom, you know, they plan, they cast vision, they have resources, they do stuff. Um, you're so dependent on what God chooses to do in your group. I mean, you're teaching people to live in the supernatural, to hear from God, see God heal. You know, you're, you're expectant all the time for God to do things. Um, and I just wonder, you know, some people think crumbs, that must be a bit scary to be leading a ministry where uh, in the, in the, in the old, you know, saying, if God doesn't show up, we're, we're, we're stuffed, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, talk to me about, about that kind of dimension to what you're doing. Absolutely. I think for me, it's been, I've made an active choice from the beginning to replace the word scary with the word exciting okay um because it definitely could be scary at points but instead i've learned to embrace the adventure of doing this with god Mm. and for example you know when when we're short of money or where we need god to break through in an area rather than being concerned or worried my prayer is okay god I have no idea how you're going to do this, but I am really excited to see how you're going to do it because I know that you will. And this is going to be an amazing testimony. And so instead of putting my, my, uh, instead of like being fearful or apprehensive, I've tried to learn to be excited. (laughs) And, um, you know, with a venture like this, you never have the same week twice. God is always leading and teaching us new things everything is ever evolving and changing and thankfully myself and the team are up for the adventure Um, and I would say as well one of the things that we're learning is to know the difference between seasons um, in what God is doing and how he is treating and 
revealing himself to his people at different times. And I found that this word seasons get, gets thrown around a lot, quite lavishly. Um, and almost, you know, almost every day could be a new season. Um, but actually, as I've studied the Bible and, and seen how throughout different um, seasons of Israel's history, God has treated them differently and provided for them in different ways. And I look specifically at the example of um, the Israelites in the wilderness and how God provided for them with manna every single day that, you know, he had the cloud by day, fire by night, that he led them, that he fed them and he gave them what they needed and sustained them. And we look at that story and we see them when they do finally make it into the promised land, all of the manna stops. And I know that I think if that was me and I, I got to a point where I was so used to God providing for me in a certain way and it suddenly stopped that I would naturally think, have I done something wrong? Am I being punished in some way? I don't believe that that's how God functions, but I know that these are thoughts that can come up in our mind. But, you know, why is he removing his hand from me? And the reality oftentimes is, is, he removes something because he has something better you know in the promised land there was fruit and honey and if people carried on eating manna they're not going to go and eat the fruit and honey and I, I find that oftentimes we can be in a new season and desperate for the manna of the old season while fruit and honey is waiting for us but all we want is to see how or to experience God the way that we're used to and the way that he used to provide for us but oftentimes that then changes and he, we know that then he wants to do something new. And so it's pressing in and asking God, God, how do you want to provide for us in this season? Because how you were providing for us has changed and how you were speaking to us has changed. And I don't want to live off of old manna and old bread. I want to live off of fresh bread that God wants to provide for me today. And so leaning in and recognizing that, when he changes what he's doing it's because I am stepping into a new season and God has something new for me and that I shouldn't be reliant upon the old and so that's one of the big takeaways that we have been learning this year about what God has for us as we step into new things. Thank you. Um, Lauren you talked about your, your team are they part of one church or from different churches how does that work out? Yeah, so as KLM, we are not a church, which, uh, praise God, I am very happy about that. We're not a church. <laughs> um, and so we all go to our own churches. All of our team, we go to different churches. Our students all go to different churches. And our heart as an organisation is that we would equip people and churches where they are, that they don't need to... Um, leave the church and join some other fancy other organization or thing that's happening that actually they would bring change where they are they would bring the kingdom of God where they are and we want to equip local churches one of the things that we've loved doing this year is taking um, our team and our students to church leadership teams to businesses to charities to pray and to prophesy and be a blessing to them and it's often these people, this group of people who are always giving out, but rarely given into. And we've had the most powerful times of God speaking and moving. And we've so enjoyed being able to do this. Fabulous. And um, you're going to tell us hopefully how people can enroll on the course um, in, in your H headquarters, but also in other places. And if there's someone listening who's thinking, crumbs, this sounds fantastic. I'd love it if this happened in my church and I don't want you to get a hundred kind of requests, but, but is that the sort of thing you'd be open for a conversation? Absolutely. We absolutely love it when um, churches or businesses, charities, as I said, contact us because our heart is to serve. We believe that the best way to lead is to serve and we want to be a blessing to what God is already doing. We're not looking to take over. We are not looking to come in and say, hey, we've got the answer. We're doing it better. We don't think that. 
we know that God is moving in what you're already doing and we just want to come alongside you and bless you. So if people want to email us, um, we would be very happy to um, to look into and to pray into doing some of those things. And so for people, they can go on the website. It's www.kingdomlivingministries.co.uk and they can find out about our courses. We've got the courses in London, in West Sussex, in Heathrow and online. And so whether you are free for a daytime or whether you're working and you want to do an evening course, then they are all options that are open to you. And our application process is on there. All the information about the courses are on there. And just to say that for our first year course, we focus on four main areas. And those areas are um, uh, intimacy with God. So learning about how we can practically get closer in our relationship with the Lord how we get rid of all the junk from the past that tries to still define us, even though it's all gone and covered by the blood of Jesus. We look at identity in Christ, learning about what the Bible says of who we really are, what's possible for us as Christians and what God has for you as an individual. We look at um, living a supernatural lifestyle, so helping people to um move in the gifts of the spirit how do we hear god's voice how do we pray for healing what do we do when it doesn't happen um how do we talk to people about jesus how do we walk in miracles and get divine strategies in our workplaces all of those things and then the last thing that we look at is calling so helping people to discover what they're called for and if you already know what you're called for that's great what we want to do is practically empower you and equip you to move forward and get from where you are right now um, to where God has you to be. And that's how we want to be supporting you and raising you up. Well, Lauren, it's been terrific to chat with you and exciting to hear how God's been wonderfully at work. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. That was my conversation with Lauren Crook, the head of Kingdom Living Ministries. That website again, kingdomlivingministries.co.uk. And you can check out the in-person and online courses there. Lauren reminded us that God is good and God is for you. So why not trust him in the week ahead? This is Andy Peck, looking forward to the next time. <laughs>